Thank you, everyone. I know that half of you were like uncomfortable, not wanting to do it. Why is she asking me? What a pain in the ass it is coming to church here on Sunday morning. And I actually get it. I get it. I get that you don't want to get up. I get it. I've been that person. Sometimes I'm still that person. However, I'm not asking you to allow people to intrude in your personal space, in your living space. I'm not asking you to feel unsafe. I'm asking you to metaphysically move beyond the evidence of separation through this practice. There is an assumption, I mean, I know that in the Four Agreements, Don Miguel says, make no assumptions. But if you're going to make assumptions, because you are, and I am, make ones that work. Assume a high idea. Assume a high expectation. In order for us to play in this sandbox of metaphysics, we, we begin by assuming our perfection. Ernest Holmes says, we must seek to realize that spiritual universe regardless of any condition which appears if we would embody the greatest good. If the spiritual universe were not perfect, it would not exist for a single moment. In order to experience what is naturally yours, your divine birthright, you have to be willing to be in the dance. So let me give you an example. Seeds, what are seeds representation of? Thoughts, ideas, prayers, right? Possibilities, okay. Soil, what does the soil represent? Couldn't hear you. The soil is the medium. The soil is that which acts upon the law. The soil is where law exists. In, in our teaching symbol, the soil is that place. It's, it's like the factory. We take the thoughts, we take the prayers, and this magical, mystical, mysterious law acts upon our spoken word and our, and our well-felt thoughts, and it creates. What's the last thing it needs? For this, it's water. What is water? You're, you nourish it with, with what? With prayer. With, with, with what? With more thoughts. With, with, with meditation. With contemplation. With your attention. Now, let me ask you something. These are actually uh, sunflower seeds. What, how successful do you think... These three elements are as is. That means as is separate on the plates. Not so, right? You're not going to have much of anything. It, only in theory. In order for them to produce, they must be in the dance. You and I are called to be in a divine, beautiful, magical dance with God, with love, with life, with, with, with mother, father, God, whatever you want to call it. I love to call, call it the divine. In order for you to excavate the natural you, the natural perfect you from within, you have to be willing to dance. So, some of us, however, get mildly distracted. We get distracted by the evidence of a, the appearances. Does anyone have a little more weight on their body, on their physical frame, than you would like to carry around? I have to ask you, are you less than... Did I miss something? Oh. <laughs> Donald. He does that just to make the rest of us feel better about ourselves. Are you less perfect because of that extra weight on your frame? Don't just say no. 
say no. There's a difference. One has an authority, one you're just trying to please me. I went to a, I went to a retreat this weekend, and uh, the t- retreat facilitator had everyone stand and play the face of God and everybody look at each other. There were so many people in that room that were just like you before. They didn't want to participate. They wanted to sit down. They were like, not into it. Not into it. They just weren't. Or, and they did it politely, so they would kind of shake hands and move on or shake hands or hug, or, you know, but it wasn't engaging. And uh, the facilitator said to them, how was that for you all? Were you comfortable? Oh, yes, they all claimed. Uh Uh-uh. And as she further facilitated the conversation, she found out they really weren't. There were many people that really weren't. So, So don't answer an answer to make me happy. Don't answer what you're supposed to. Be real. But also be directive. Have, make the decision. And the decision is yes. Even when appearances appear to show me that I have more weight in my body than I would like, I still stand in the truth of my perfection. Does anyone here have a little less zeros in their dollar, in their checkbook, that they, than they would like? That's a big way we measure our okayness and our perfection. Are you less perfect because of it? No. 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 Absolutely not. It is imperative that you get in touch. When you incarnated into this physical body, it was the perfect you that incarnated. I love that bumper sticker. I haven't seen it a long time. That God, God doesn't make, God makes no mistakes or something. Anybody know that bumper sticker? Huh? Oh, that's another one. God doesn't make junk. When you pay more attention to form and the way you measure form, instead of to the spiritual reality of your perfection, you rise and you suffer in that form and in that measurement. It is so important that we turn a blind eye to the way we measure things on the outside and a deaf ear, consciously turn a deaf ear to those, to those messages that we hear. Now, there's a lot of good reason. I understand. There's a lot of stuff going on in the world. This, this is the first time in weeks I didn't have to come here dragging bad news into the room. I mean, there's been so much, I, and I'm, I'm thankful for that relief. So if that always exists, but you're not experiencing it, what's up? So there's, a, there's an old Indian story about the two wolves. You've heard the story, and I know you know the story, but I'm going to repeat it anyway. So this grandfather was talking to his grandson and telling him that he was in the middle of struggles and that he had conflicting ideas living inside of him. And he wasn't, you know, that he was working to figure out what was right and what was wrong. And he said they both lived inside there. And the grandson said, well, well, grandfather, if, if they both live inside of you, which one wins? And he said, the one that I feed. You're not different than me. I just might be more practiced, because I have to be, because it's in the nature of what I, my job and how I show up. But I know that any of your discomfort is because you place more attention on what you, on the lies than on the truth of your perfection. Your attention must be captured. You must pull your attention to where you need it, want it to be, to be fully expressed. I caught a old, um, an old video from Rev. Ike. <laughs> he was a hoot. And he said something, and, and this is, he, he just worded something that I say, but much more, much, and much more fun. And he said that the, in order to fulfill what you want, you have to fulfill it. 
which is to feel it fully. You have to be willing to, to activate a new you. You have to be willing to be unreasonably loud and ridiculous and, and enthused to activate the law. Because the law exists. The law is neutral. The law is not knocking on your door without, like an, a vampire, <laughs> without your invitation. You must invite the law to work on your behalf. You might think of the law also as the Lord. Okay, so if you're reading something and, and something says the Lord, you can replace that with law. But the law is neutral. If you want something dynamic from the law, you must be dynamic in your calling it out. Sometimes we're a little too polite. In order to activate the experience of your perfection, which truly already exists, okay, but it exists as these seeds. In order to have these seeds grow and to have the seeds of you grow, you, excuse me, a little technical thing here. In order to do that, you have to be almost a little ridiculous. So would you like to be a little ridiculous with me right now? Okay, I want you to please me now. <laughs> Forget what I said before. <laughs> Well, no, I don't mean that. <laughs> You're having way too much fun with that. Okay. Say with great enthusiasm, I am a perfect child of the beloved one. I am a perfect child of the beloved one. Every ounce of my being is perfect. Every ounce of my being is perfect. I call forth prosperity into my life. I am healed and whole and complete always. I am healed and whole and complete always. I am magnificent. I am magnificent. Isn't that fun? Yeah. But sometimes we're too polite. We, we wish we want. And until you get your language from wishing, wanting, and hoping, to declaring, accepting, and allowing, there will be very little activity. Very little activity. We must be wild and unreasonable in all moments. I'm sorry, I had another quote from Holmes and I, I'm just trying to find a few. Give me one second. I don't know what I do with this other quote. I must not have printed it out in time. But any, any, any delay is because you are, you are holding back. I hear people say all the time, oh, it isn't working. It isn't working. Hello? The I in the it is I, it's you. If it's not working, you might as well just say, I'm not working. You might as well just say it right now. I'm not working. I don't feel like doing it. I don't feel like growing. I don't feel like it's succeeding. And I'm not going to do a dang thing about it. I'm going to stay st sick and miserable, unhappy and lonely. Would you like to join me in that? No. Oh, thank God. But yet those are the whisperings. Those are the whisperings that are happening underneath. In order to, in order to not practice spiritual bypass, in order to not do that, actually, let me explain spiritual bypass. Spiritual bypass is when you know, someone says to you, how are you? You go, I'm good. I'm fine. <laughs> right? Fine. <laughs> oh, I'm, I'm good. It's okay. Yeah. Everything's good. 
and you're out of integrity with the truth of your being because inside you're not feeling good. But you're too polite to be honest. Now, I'm not saying that you want to drop your, your load of truth in front of everybody because if someone can't handle it, it could be a very negative experience both for you and for the other person. But it might be just as honest to say, I'm having a little rough time today. I'm feeling a little, mm, feel a little quiet, a little, I have some concerns I'm working on. I'm okay, and I have some concerns. Now, that's true. The fun, there's a fine line between being honest and playing that spiritual bypass. But the spiritual bypass put scabs over the reality of your being and has you not be in your authentic self. If you want to touch your perfection, you have to be authentic. Do you understand? Do you hear me? Yeah. It's, this, is, this is the difference between metaphysics light and being strong in this teaching. You and I are called to have a, to actually model what, what, what a metaphysical badass is. That's going to be a, that, that's going to be a new label we're going to have, MBA, metaphysical badass. <laughs> if we're going to be metaphysical badasses, we've got to be able to look the thing in the eye and say, huh, that's not me. I am more than that. Because the per perfection, the reality of who I am is here now. So you can be metaphysical light, or you could be metaphysical badasses. So this idea of perfection, it's, it's an idea, it's a reality, but it has to be excavated. And all of the things that you heard everyone said are part of the truth and part of the work and part of the practices. We don't get there automatically, which sounds contrary, because it's innate. But we've been so bombarded with human conditioning and opinions and reality and the media and, and right and wrong as uh, imposed upon us from the outside. So yes, it's there, and yes, it's perfect, and yes, you have never been hurt, harmed, or injured in any way in that deepest place within you. But you and I have got to touch it, excavate it, and we have to have a dance with the divine in order to express it. Yes? yes. Repeat after me again. I am a perfect child of the beloved one. I am whole in every way. I consciously release anything contrary to this. I am willing to love the all of me. I am willing to accept myself as I am and as I am not. Beautiful, and so it is. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. So let's do a quick prayer. If you will, hold the hand of somebody. And know with me right here and right now that that hand that you are holding is your brother or your sister. That any pain, any wounds, any stories, anything that live at the level of the subconscious, I declare as of this spoken word, they have no power over you now or ever again. I declare that the truth of your being, your perfection, your wholeness, your brilliance, your magnificence is the truth of you. I declare that every day in every way, even if it's one thought at a time, that that reality becomes more and more and more your reality. I declare for you, for me, 
for every human walking at the place where the divine lives within. Oh, it's stunning. It's stunning. And as I pay attention to this place of this indwelling, loving, magnificent God, I am called to the attention of my perfection. I believe in you. I believe in your ability to embrace this truth. I believe in the place that lives within you that is whole. I believe that every word that you speak and the beating of your heart and every breath that you breathe is a divine activity in the mind of God. It's perfect. Let us begin with our perfection. Let us walk in our perfection. Let us speak in our perfection. Let us act from our perfection. Let us model a belief in ourselves that's so brilliant it encourages all humans to believe in themselves. Let us be that model. Let us cast out any temptation to judge, any temptation to complain, any temptation to gossip. Let us cast out those habits that keep us from our perfection and instead Speak mindfully, think mindfully, act mindfully, now and forevermore. If you can accept this as your charge, if you can accept this as the truth of your being, I invite you to speak a soft yes into the room. Now we allow this to be so. And so it is. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you.